Out of all three of the hero roles, DPS has the most amount of characters in the entire game. Sometimes when trying to expand your hero pool or learning exactly what to play, it can be incredibly daunting looking at this giant roster of characters without any innate knowledge about each and every one of them. That being said, in this video, I'm going to be going over one really solid tip for each and every DPS character to get you caught up to speed so you can start winning on a new hero instantly. All that being said, let's just jump right into it, shall we? Now kick it off with character number one, we have Genji. Now the biggest tip that I have for you is called the duality of Genji, and this is a really complicated concept, but I'm going to try to summarize it incredibly fast. The thing about Genji is there's two predominant playstyles. The playstyle of the poke and pressure, where you're playing with your team, finding damage and opportunity with your shurikens, contesting space, and building that precious old charge. And then there's the brawl style of Genji. When you find that opportunity or you're going in with your team, brawling the enemy, doing damage up close, and confirming kill after kill. Now the trick about the duality of Genji is the transition between the static poke and pressure stage of Genji and the brawl stage. If you find yourself not finding impact, or feeding far too often, you're probably messing up this transition. There needs to be a specific reason before swapping from one stage to the next, and if you end up feeding as a result, the reasoning was probably not good enough and you really need to reevaluate why you went in in the first place. Now moving on to character number two, we have McCree. The really important thing that you need to understand about McCree is identify your role in each and every game. Sometimes going on flanks and off angles could be extremely impactful for getting picks and surprising the enemy, but if you go on these flanks when your backline greatly needs your help, you're not gonna be there to protect them from incoming reapers, dooms, and other factors. There's tons of ways you can put impact on the front line and protect your teammates. Something like flashing above enemy Reinhardt shields can allow you to easily double headshot him and you and your team can focus fire on him together. That coupled with dealing with enemy divers can make you really powerful on the front line too. So even though you can go on a flank, you might want to think twice about it and really evaluate the risk versus reward. Now with Kree being one of the best DPS right now on ranked, if you want to see an in-depth McCree VOD review, smash that like button and let me know in the comments down below so I can get right on it. Now moving on to character number three, we have Hanzo. Now for Hanzo, one of the best things that you could do is use your Sonic arrow as traps. Hanzo can headshot and instantly turn a matchup. So if you run behind natural cover and Sonic arrow, the entrance of that natural cover, if a DPS or support chase you, you can turn the matchup because you have perfect information. That kind of information is extremely valuable on something like Hanzo. Storm arrow is even more unreliable now with its damage nerf. So in a duel, try to rely on this less and try to become more consistent at just hitting your primary fire. Now moving on to character number four, we have Doomfist. The most important thing you can learn on Doomfist is learn the cycle of Doomfist. If you could learn the cycle of Doomfist, of how to engage, try to fish for a pick, disengage and get out safely, there will always be more opportunities to get kills. The cycle of using one ability to engage, then the other ability to disengage over and over again is the cycle of Doomfist that can get you the most value. Then, then once you build up your ultimate, you can all in the enemy. Now the best way to not get punished on Doom is to track cooldowns. Things like Sleep Darts and McCree Flashbang, if you could track these cooldowns, you can take a favorable matchup with the enemy, hit them hard and fast before they have a chance to outplay you. They don't even have their cooldown, so you don't really have anything that can shut you down. Now moving on to character number five, we have Widowmaker. Now for Widowmaker, what you want to use is use the high ground and her effective range to get the most impact out of her. The thing about Widow is she has the longest effective range out of every character in the game. She's lethal from any stage in the map, so really abusing really locked sight lines and repositioning yourself when enemies get close is incredibly powerful on Widow. Look to punish enemies when they're trying to get in position to make an assault on you. Also playing the high ground, getting dove, dropping to low ground, then grappling back up to high ground and potentially dropping even back to low ground again is a way that you can change your positioning multiple times rapidly making it really hard for enemies to punish you if you get even a little bit of peel you can usually survive and if you can hit your shots in your transition that could be a way that you actually win a lot of matchups that you have no business winning now moving on to character number six we have reaper now for reaper you want to use wraith to bait out cooldowns the cool thing about wraith in general is you can go in at an enemy put a lot of pressure in them to force out these cooldowns and then after you're in wraith you can decide whether or not to disengage or engage based on the outcome of what the enemy did let's say you go in on the enemy mccree you put in a couple body shots you wraith and he doesn't flashbang you should really just disengage and get back to your team. But if you Wraith and you see that the McCree wasted his flashbang and you successfully baited it out, you can decide on a whim to go right back at the McCree, kill him, get that lifesteal, and secure a kill in the matchup. Raids essentially gives you the flexibility to use it to go back in and be more aggressive or to disengage altogether. Now moving on to character number seven, we have Mei. Now with Mei, you want to be patient with walls, but consistent. 
Think about the ways that the enemies will try to outplay you. Sometimes when you're waiting to set up a wall, a Hansa will jump over the wall and try to headshot you to shut you down. Sometimes characters like D.Va will try to get you to bait your wall out so that their team can push in. Try to only wall when you're blocking off things that are fundamental for the enemy team pushing in and don't have mobility. Things like a Reinhardt, once he's trapped with a wall, even if he's through with one or two people, it's a lot easier for your team to take a 6v3 than for you to just try to wall off a D.Va, her fly over the wall, and then you have to take a full team fight getting no wall value. Now moving on to character number 8, we have Ash. Now with Ash, learn the dynamite arc as it's actually really easy to hit every time. The dynamite goes right in front of your natural crosshair, so for close range dynamites, you can hit that almost 100% of the time with little mechanical skill. Don't also waste your coach gun, because coach gun is one of your most powerful escape abilities. And also, don't coach gun right in front of enemy DPS. Good Hanzo's Widow's Crease will always hit you if you go in a natural arc, so be sure to understand that it also makes you extremely vulnerable, or you use it without thinking about the implications behind what the enemy can do to punish you. Now moving on to character number 9, we have Farah. Now with Farah, what you want to do is learn how to engage rapidly, utilize natural cover, and effective range to outplay hitscan. So learning how to engage rapidly, a lot of that comes down to concussion use. Something you could do is go into a map and training room, and just practice concussioning across the map, learning exactly how to concussion yourself to put you exactly where you want to be to pressure enemy hit scans that are holding the high ground or holding a specific position that could be one of the best ways and also i find that playing far and something like triad free for all where there's tons of hit scans all over the place can be kind of awful for yourself but if you get the hang of it it can be really helpful to up that mechanical aspect of far so something that you do need to understand before i move on is if you could win the mini game of killing hit scan then you can take really high sight lines and rule the skies and no one could do anything about it often a team will put in one character that is meant to deal with you so if you could aggressively just poke and prod from long distance play natural cover make a plan to make a play onto that enemy dps hit scan after you kill that hit scan then all of a sudden you can just rain from the skies and pretty much farm the enemy team now a lot of these tips are surface level but if you want to learn about each and every character and master them quickly definitely come check out gameleap.com you won't regret it so now moving on to character number 10 we have junkrat now the thing about junkrat that you should think about is crafty trap use can get free kills there's a lot of different places that you can hide a trap mine combo things like hiding it along potential routing for enemies behind natural cover or even near and around megas another really strong use for trap in general is just to put it near you where you think the enemy is going to engage that could be a good way to catch doomfist genji's wrecking balls and those can essentially be free kills so that's a really powerful thing that you could do on junkrat something else that you should try to do is keep a mine always on you if you can because you want to make sure that you always have that form of mobility if you need to escape from a situation as a bonus tip assign the trap spray for junk route because you can spray it in specific places and i've even had enemies play around my spray because they thought it was an actual trap which is really funny but it really costs you nothing and it can be a way to actually you know mind games the enemy so moving on to character number 11, we have Tracer. Patience is really important on Tracer. Getting value out of each and every ability is so important on Tracer. I see way too many Tracers use all their abilities to set up or to bridge the gap to their engages. If you use two blinks just to get to the Zen, you only have one blink to actually duel him. And if you use your recall, it's going to pull you so far away that you're really going to have to disengage or you're going to just lose the matchup. Now, if you can bridge the gap between you and the Zen without using any blinks or maybe only using one, then you're going to actually have multiple blinks to outplay that Zen. When you get out of recall, you're going to be right near the Zen as well. So really keep in mind what you're using your abilities for. Try to use them for an actual purpose each and every time, and you'll get more value at a Tracer overall. Now, moving on to character number 12. 12, we have Sombra. For Sombra, the biggest mistake that a lot of players make is they use their Translocate to take them way out of the fight onto a completely safe Mega that no one's ever going to find. The problem is, you cannot play a character and take yourself out of the fight for 30 second intervals. You're just bringing no value to the team, and you're really making a 6v5 a lot of the time. You're really creating that imbalance for your team. So what you should be trying to do is use your Translocate instead to abuse high ground and reposition yourself. Think of it as a movement tool in the same way that a dash is a movement tool or in the same way that a tracer blink is a movement tool abuse the high ground use your translocate as movement and just get a lot of natural healing from your team instead this can mean that you're in the fight more often you're building up that ultimate charge more often you have more uptime which means more ultimates in general and that's just going to be better for your impact as a team and you're not leaving your teammates to high and dry in a 5v6 now moving on to character number 13 we have soldier 76 so with soldier 76 i see a lot of players just playing him in a way that's really not that effective if you're going to play soldier so if you're playing soldier you don't want to be playing on the front lines you don't want to be 
playing with your team not really what soldier excels at is because of his movement ability and all the other aspects of his kit he could take the high ground and take off angles and look to burst down enemies really rapidly the cool thing about soldier is he could create this cross angle putting pressure on the enemy team he can either one create that pressure with the enemy or two try to find a pick like a support or a dps and with his helix rocket and his primary fire just burst them down out of nowhere getting a pick for his team and the cool thing about soldier is because of his movement ability and the fact that enemies have to come pursue him he can easily run away or he could stand his ground and with his helix his primary fire and his heal station he can actually do a lot of different enemies if an enemy genji uses his dash to bridge the gap or trace uses multiple blinks to come and get soldier he can really win that matchup a lot of the time if he still has some abilities to use in that matchup so that's the thing that's really powerful about soldier and if you're playing soldier you should be playing this guerrilla warfare style soldier this poke and prod or this pick opportunity soldier not the frontline play with your team soldier if you're going to be doing that there's a lot of other characters you could be playing such as a mccree that is just better at that job now moving on to character number 14 we have symmetra so the tip that i have about symmetra is really try to think about all the dynamic uses for tp so sure you could use tp to get your allies back from you know if they die they can come back to the point faster but a lot of times if the enemy has advantage they might storm the point rapidly and then your tp is not going to get any value but if you can use your tp to get your team in a better position to set up a diva bomb shadow play to set up a tp bomb pick potential tp can be used for all kinds of different things you could even put some characters that could never get on the high ground to the high ground really think about all the different uses for tp because i find that a lot of players aren't creative enough they're not really extracting all the value that tp actually brings to the table it's a really creative ability and if you're really into creative expression if you're really into thinking about all the different opportunities symmetra is the perfect character for you and then lastly as a secondary tip for symmetra symmetra's photon barrier her ultimate is one of the most powerful single ultimates in the entire game the problem that i see a lot with symmetra's is when you and your team are entering a point they wait far too long to set up the wall setting up the wall instantly makes it so your team aren't going to get picked they're not going to get staggered it allows for easy push onto the point and it really puts a lot of pressure on the enemy if you wait too long to do it you give the enemy all these opportunity the full time barrier lasts so long just use it instantly push onto the point and make the enemy play around this extremely difficult to play around wall it pretty much just gives your team so value innately that out of every ultimate in the game if i could talk about a single ult that is most likely to win the game by itself or win a team fight by itself it would be symmetra's ultimate now moving on to character number 15 we have bastion now bastion could definitely be a really powerful hero to play in some bunker even though bunkers on the downturn but something that is important about bastion is you need to understand when you need to reposition or the enemy team has ultimates or they swap to a specific counter so let's say that you're bastion you won a couple team fights and you know that the enemy has blizzard you know the enemy has barrage they have this ultimate that ultimate what you could do is instead of pushing the cart with your team you could set up on an off angle to where the enemy have to contest the cart but they want to contest you as well so it makes them harder so understanding that maybe not always you should play on the car so if you're playing off the car you're kind of like a budget soldier 76 you're much worse but it's better than leaving yourself vulnerable to the enemy's game plan which is essentially what you're doing if you just keep playing on the car over and over again and you know the enemy has specific ultimates to shut you down now another thing that you should practice on bastion is practice your ulting i know i say this a lot but go into a practice range practice specific ulting not enough players practice bastion's ult and it shows if you really practice your ult you practice rocket jumping you practice exactly how to hit directs on bastion the difference difference between practicing your ult and not is the difference between snowballing a point and then maybe ulting and getting no value or getting shut down altogether so definitely put in the time and practice your ultimate now moving on to the 16th character the final dps last but certainly not least we got the sleeper in the meta right now is actually torbjorn torbjorn is actually not that bad in the meta right now he's actually kind of being played quite a bit it's because of his armor coupled with break he can actually put a lot of pressure on a lot of the things that are being played right now he breaks shields really well too but what you need to think about with torbjorn is i know that some people want to use your e ability to make your primary fire fire faster which is fine in some circumstances but most of the time what you really need to do is save it for when the enemy engages because that's really torb's only way to actually duel enemies without it his hitbox is far too large his fire weight is far too slow in a 1v1 he's not going to win those without that ability so you need to think about if the enemy is going to come in maybe you need to save that ability use it with purpose use it when you actually need it and then that will ensure that you win more match matchups on Torb altogether. Now, if you want to master any of the characters on this list and you want in-depth VOD reviews based
based on Gram Master POV, definitely come check out GameLeague.com. We have master classes that are designed to help you master any of these DPS heroes. So if you want to start prepping your skills now to make the climb to Gram Master, do yourself a favor and come check us out. You won't regret it. Anyways, that's all the tips that we have for right now. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. That's all I have for you today. I'm Coach Mills, and until next time.